It's Cosmo with Solutions 8, and in this video, I want to teach you how to um, review your change history inside of Google Ads. And even if you know where change history is and how to use it, I've got some pro tips that I think I might be able to provide some value in. Before I dive into that, I just want to say that we're at 951 subscribers. So thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed. You've made my day. I don't. I think we started this initiative like 90 days ago or so, uh, and we had effectively zero subscribers. So. You know, not that 951 subscribers is the most subscribers anybody's ever had on YouTube, but for me, it feels meteoric. And if I can get 49 more subscribers and I get to start going live, and I'm going to do fun stuff like, you know, write your ad copy for you, do landing page overviews, um, you know, maybe some hot seats. Uh, so if you want to see that happening, share me with a buddy or two. Try to pimp out our channel and get us some more subscribers. I'd be grateful. Um, so change history. Before I dive into the nitty gritty of the technical facets of it, I just want to offer a brief philosophical aside. The number of changes in an account is not a direct indication as to the quality of that management. Um, and, and oftentimes, you know, we kind of get caught up in like, well, there's, you know, there's not enough changes in here. They're clearly not doing their job. Uh, one thing that John, who's my business partner, if you haven't been watching our channel, one thing he says all the time that I really like is, you're paying me just as much, you're paying me to know what buttons not to push, just as much as you're paying me what, to know what buttons to push. And sometimes, you know, like an ad manager that's real cookie, that's a dangerous human. Um, and you know, we have one campaign in particular, and this is very uncommon. So I'm, it's not like I'm going to tell you that this is what we do for all of our clients, but we have one campaign in particular that last year we made seven changes. There were seven changes in change history for a year. Now there were other things that we were doing, you know, like the, we're doing obviously feed optimization because it's an e-commerce client, which is pretty significant. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's something about the example that I'm offering you that's not quite as applicable because there's more work to be done elsewhere. Um, but feed optimization doesn't show up in change history. Um, the, the landing page optimizations that we're recommending and CRO recs and you know those types of things, they don't show up in change history. Um, but we, we've had the client forever. And in the very beginning, of course, we did all the work. Um, but as they've optimized and, and properly qualified, then we just haven't had to make as many, as many changes. Now, we monitor the campaign actively. Uh, we're in it regularly and making sure that everything's running the way that it needs to run. Um, you know, and, and that's a hyper extreme example. But I just want to make the point that if you don't see a ton of changes in your account, that's okay. Now, I've got some, some friends in the agency space that actually cheat the system, and I don't fault them for doing it. Uh, heaven forgive me for saying. They, they'll set up like, you know, automation that says increase a bid by five cents and then decrease that same bid by five cents every couple of days or whatever. You know, like weird little random changes like that that don't mean anything. Um, the reason I don't fault them to, for doing that is because all it does is take that, that nosy client that is looking at the wrong thing and it kind of gets them off your back. So if you've got a client that's like, you know, oh, how many changes have you made today or this week or this month or whatever, and that's the way that you want to cheat the system, that's fine. I choose not to do that. I just let people know, like, look, that's not why you're paying me. If I'm making you money, I'm doing my job. If you want to sit here and, you know, look over my shoulder and watch me make changes inside of Google Ads, then you need a full-time employee. And God bless you on that endeavor. Um, so with that said, I just do, I want to take the, the, the pressure of, you know, constantly making changes inside of Google Ads off. But... Uh, it's still a nice indication as to how somebody's managing a campaign and what they're doing and where the campaign started and where it's going and what their recurring management cadence is and, and those types of things. So um, in case you don't already know, to get to change history, uh, first of all, I'm in all campaigns. So in all campaigns, you scroll down here and click on change history. You can look at change history on an individual campaign basis, um, but you need to know that you're doing that because it, it tends to narrow down your field of view. Now, this is a campaign that we're actively managing. Uh, it's only a couple of weeks old, as you can tell. Um, launched on the 22nd, and you can see the changes that we're uh, making. So today is January 6th, as I'm recording this video, and the last change was made January 2nd. Um, now, we've been in this campaign, and we've been on top of it, like why don't I write in a paper plate in a snowstorm, because this client is spending quite a bit, both in Google and in Facebook. Um, but we didn't see the need to make any changes, because at the moment, performance is actually um, uh, uh, going well in accordance with what we want to see happening here. Um, now, you'll notice that we can click on this campaign change. I can see January 2nd, uh, target CPA was increased from $5 to $6. Woo. Um, and you can tell, like, it's like, oh, okay, we're, we're willing to get a little bit more aggressive here. Um, but and a couple of notes is it, these drop downs are going to give you a little bit more context. Um, you'll notice that some of them provide uh, even greater context than others. Um, here's, you know, a, a budget was increased um, from four grand to 12 grand um, on a spe specific campaign. And it, it's running in um, reverse chronological order. So it's starting from today, the most recent, and then it's um, moving backwards. And so um, now you can obviously change and filter that if you want to. Um, and you know, start with the, the most recent campaign um, 
change, but I, I choose to look at it this way because I actually kind of like that. I want to see what's happening now. Um, a, a couple of notes for you, though. One really cool thing is if you select a campaign specifically, um, so I'm just going to choose the first campaign that shows up, um, what you'll see are these little triangles. I think Google calls them annotations. And what they'll do is they'll tell you kind of the inflection points, like when a change was made, and what collection of changes were made. So you'll notice that like right here, there was a ton of changes because this is the early stages of the campaign. And then as we go further, you know, we'll have little peaks and valleys where it's like, oh, minor change, minor change, minor change. And uh, I can select one of these, these um, uh, inflection points and then I can choose the change type that I wanna see. So you know, I can say, I wanna see all changes or uh, just bid changes, budget changes, keyword changes, etc. So let's say that I look at keyword changes. Um, and now I can see that there were 30 keyword changes, 29 of which kind of happened in this, this, this you know, single sequence here. And then I open up those keyword changes and I can see the keywords uh, that were added. And notice that we're using broad automation, um, you know, hashtag pro tip. Um, and then we've got the ad groups that are applied here too. Now, a couple of things have happened that you should be aware of. Um, the first one is, is now Google has applied a date filter and I can remove that date filter. But um, when I remove that date filter, you'll notice that the date range now, remember it started on January 2nd, now it's December 27th. And you think to yourself like, how could that be? And that could be because you are in the campaign that, that you selected. And so if I back out and go to all campaigns again, um, then you'll notice that it starts to expand a little bit further for me uh, once more. So um, be careful with the, the campaign navigation because it can kind of get a little um, a little squirrely. Um, but with, you know, that said, you have a really amazing tool here that gives you the opportunity to see what people are doing. Um, and you'll notice that I just clicked over to account changes and I can see who's making the change, what time the, the, the change has been made. Um, uh, I can see ad changes, um, you know, specific changes to, to the, the, the ads um, copy potentially, um, bid changes, budget, access, conversion, uh, keywords, etc. So there's a, a lot that you can view, uh, basically everything that somebody's done inside the Google Ads campaign. One thing that's very notable is the, and we have a video on this inside of our YouTube channel if you want to hunt it down. Uh, maybe I'll try to hunt it down and drop it in the description. But Google makes automated changes on your behalf, which is infuriating. And the automated changes that Google makes on your behalf don't land in change history. What? I know. I know. It's crazy. It's like they're trying to hide it from us. Um, they land in this weird, obscure, kind of back alley uh, portal that Google provides. And why they would make that delineation is still kind of like, oh, really? Um, so that's, that's just worth noting. But anyway, that's how to view change history. If you've got any pro tips for me or anything that I can learn, um, drop them in the comments. Hit me with a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you want to help me go live. I need a 1,000 subscribers in order to do that. And I think that's it. That's all I've got. I appreciate all y'all that are watching, commenting, sharing. Um, you're making my day. So thank you so much. I hope this is a value. I hope you're getting something out of it. And I'll talk to you later.